attending this event and welcome everyone in the Ad Camp Commons. I'm very happy to see so many familiar and unfamiliar and maybe familiar avatars and names and I appreciate uh, you all to join us on this beautiful Mother's Day, whatever that means to you and I, I hope that uh, you can find the, the love that uh, might be connected to this day. Um, I'm the mother and founder of VR Ad Camp, which is uh, one of the areas of this uh, social housing, virtual reality social housing neighborhood called the uh, Circle de la Fortale. My name is Yubit, I go by she, her pronouns, and I'm uh, physically in the, on the traditional Lejan Ohlone uh, territory that is also referred to as Albany in the Bay Area. And it's 10 a.m. for me, a beautiful sunny day out there. And uh, today we are uh, welcoming the first cohort of uh, 2023 of uh, mm -hmm. the VR Art Camp. Uh, our third artist is uh, still in the lobby, but I hope that they can join soon. And somebody is trying to come in on the, on the phone, which uh, usually doesn't work as good as, uh, as if you have access to a desktop or a laptop. So I recommend you to use the strongest softwares or the strongest hardwares and the strongest internet that you may have. A mouse also helps your life and so does uh, headphones. And uh, I will uh, say a few words about the Arad camp and introduce you to this project. After I will introduce you to our amazing artists today, uh, Connie Tsang, Robin Rutenberg, and Polly Corbell. And after I uh, give you a short intro uh, about their practices, we are going to visit their new VR, social VR studio spaces. Mm -hmm. And we spend about 25 minutes in each room. So you will have a chance to look around on your own and explore the space. And uh, the artists might uh, give you some prompts or other uh, uh, other uh, suggestions before. Uh, for example, uh, we are going to explore a sound uh, bike ride in Connie's space. And for this, we uh, I will share some, uh, I am going to upload some avatars right now that you may uh, choose if you feel, or Connie, would you like to, uh, to say a bit about the avatar. So I'm now uh, pinning these uh, bike uh, and avatars on wheels. And if you, uh, if you put your mouse over that, you see this uh, text use avatar. And when you click that, then uh, you become that avatar. So I will place a few different avatars around here. And after that, we'll have to remove them so during this introduction, you can uh, change your avatars into one of these, uh, if you feel like. And so, Connie, would you like to share a bit about this? Yes, of course. Um, these avatars have been created recently because we are uh, we just uh, finished a film shooting with uh, different um, people connected to wheels, to bicycles. And uh, the one uh, you did place the first uh, is Cornelia Scheuer. Uh, she's a dancer and performer in the wheelchair. And uh, in this pose, she's doing an uh, object or uh, wheelchair manipulation. And uh, the other one you can see is um, Astrid. Astrid is one of my uh, um, dear um, bike polo um, mates. And uh, she's a bike polo player. Um, bike polo is a sport, a very new sport. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite interesting because it's a, a gender open sport and there are many international uh, competitions um, very much um, open and including different um, uh, people from all kind of um, yeah, backgrounds and, and it's a very community-based uh, sport. And uh, another um, uh, bike you can see here, um, it's a sound bike and uh, I'm also the founder of the 
a participatory performance named Rad performance. And Rad is a German term for we. And uh, yeah, this is a bicycle performance actually in public space. And we developed in a team uh, within the last three years, uh, loudspeakers, uh, mobile loudspeakers for cycling, circling compositions in public space. And this is one through this scan of this kind of cargo bike. And, um, and what else can you see? You can also see Anish. Anish is a basketball player in the wheelchair. Um, he was also performing. Um, in a, in, a, in the film shooting and in a performance. So the blue um, line you can see on the wheelchair and on his body, it's actually a laser uh, beam. He was dancing in this, uh, in this um, uh, laser projection. And uh, the other one is Alex. And Alex is also a, a basketball player in the wheelchair. And um, wheelchair basketball, it's called and um, carrying his wheelchair basketball actually at the, at the trailer. Um, it's upside down, it looks a bit like a creature. And um, yeah, these are the avatars I can, I can, I would like to introduce you. And um, I would also like to introduce you to my dear friend, Matthias Hurtel, and uh, who's joining us today. Uh, he's based in Rotterdam, and uh, I'm in Vienna, I'm in Austria, and uh, he's a sound composer and media artist, and um, exploring links between sound, electromagnetism, and telecommunication networks, and he joined Rad Performance as an artist for many times, so we already created many uh, performances in public space uh, for cycling and circling, and uh, this time we will perform an experiment together scores and sounds that are based actually on a historical dance format uh, named Cycle Circle Dance. And uh, Cycle Circle Dance, I would like to explain you briefly. Um, this is a choreography for cycling. And um, we've been uh, working with this choreography for a couple of years, but it was actually um, performed during the turn of the last century in uh, European cities all over um, yeah, Vienna as well, in the city, in public spaces. And, um, and there are beautiful drawings and, and graphic um, scores for this. And uh, a couple of years ago, we, did some, we started with uh, some graphic notations based on the Cycle 30 dance. And uh, for the first time, we will try this now as a performance, as a concert in the virtual space. And um, for this, uh, we would like you to, to join us into our uh, little uh, space um, and um, we will perform for you, circling around you actually. So this will uh, be, for that time it won't be uh, a group ride, but it will be more an experiment to, uh, um, an experiment uh, we can actually um, yeah, enjoy together in the virtual space because we adapted a choreography um, we did in the, in the um, so to say, public space. So, um, for example, in um, recently I started also um, more researching about sites with different architectural layers, such as uh, bike spirals in Vienna. Uh, these are architectural um, constructions where you can easily cross a bridge when uh, entering them. And um, then you get uh, another layer, of course. But um, this uh, is a choreography we have been developing for the public space, as mentioned. And in the virtual space, um, it offers, um, I would like to say, similar opportunities. So uh, for us, it was a, an interesting simulation. But um, we are not any more limited to the horizontal line. But we can think very spatial, and that's quite interesting for us because there are no boundaries. And um, it was quite interesting because all the movements are based on ideas we first tried out in public space, and now we try to link them and play them in virtual space. Um, yeah, so so we we will try to share this with you. I mean, it's still in the making, and it's still uh, exciting to, to play around with them. But uh, yeah, let, let's see. Thank you so much, Sandy. Um, 
this is so exciting to me to like explore what uh, what these uh, public performances might be in social VR. And uh, before we enter Connie's room, I would like to give you a little introduction of uh, the VR art camp. You also, uh, can everyone hear me well? Is it all good? Yes. Thank you. Uh, we, are, we are still actually waiting for uh, for Polly. Uh, Polly, we're not able to, uh, to join the space yet. So I really hope that, uh, that uh, we can uh, figure this out soon. But, uh, and this is also the very part of VR art camp that this is an experiment that sometimes works out and sometimes there are some hiccups and I appreciate your enthusiasm with, with uh, all of the inconveniences. So as I mentioned, this is the part of a larger uh, project that I've been growing since 2018, a social housing neighborhood in virtual reality. And uh, it's a social VR art residency for uh, art women and uh, artists who are uh, coming from underserved uh, groups. And uh, I, we are trying to create a, a safe, inclusive and, and uh, radical space community together and explore what belonging and community might mean in these, uh, in these spaces. It is also a bit for those whose practice is not rooted in uh, digital media. And so for as, as diverse community with different voices and approaches as possible. Our mission is to co-create educational social VR events and learning together how to use this layer of our social fabric based on radical inclusion, cyber intentionality, and to elevate the shift of our upscaling digital existence that might be very uh, uncomfortable sometimes and challenging. I'm also uh, aiming to move towards more digital experiences and connect uh, our community in the physical realms. And for this, we had a one week long uh, in-person art camp, ERL art camp event uh, two years ago. And with the amazing support and uh, help from the Southern Exposure in San Francisco, we received the Alternative Exposure Grant that is funding for uh, the artist honorariums. And also we will be uh, able to uh, do uh, do uh, another IRL uh, art camp uh, night in a real camping with the real fire, with the real bodies. That's super exciting. And also probably we'll have some uh, exhibition opportunities in the Bay Area, the Root Division. And uh, I'm also uh, gathering community uh, flying at tents. So I think it's a very interesting time to be in these spaces when everyone is already fed up being online, right? And how do we still uh, use these opportunities to connect an artist like Robin from Berlin or Connie from Vienna and uh, Polly from New Haven and we can still be in the same space together. So if you would like to know more about our work or sign up for our newsletter, you can do that on our website, uh, vrartcamp.net. And um, I also would like to uh, thank for all the generous donations that uh, we receive that supports the, the work of the artists, but all the art camp events are uh, not, uh, no one is turned uh, away for the lack of funding so they should be free events and uh, and also uh, the you can read more about the uh, code of conduct of the events on the website so these are the things i wanted to share about uh, vr art camp the art camp commons where we are now is our gathering space and as you uh, as you can see there are uh, four tents around the, the fire. Uh, and right now we don't have the links and the bios in these spaces, but um, 
after the show and tell, I will upload the information of our artists, the new artists, and one of the one of the uh, tent will be dedicated for our former artists who uh, have uh, uh, created their uh, social VR studio spaces uh, throughout. Like we, we started this work in 2020 August, and this is our ninth show and tell, and uh, we work together with about. 35 artists so far, and uh, I'm very excited to to welcome our first cohort of 2023. This was the first time that uh, we had an open call, and uh, Robin, Polly, and Connie, and also Libby Pons were selected for the first cohort, but Libby had to uh, postpone her residency. And so uh, Connie already shared a, a little or uh, about her, her practices, but I would like to just uh, to be very formal, read her bio and, uh, and share a bit about her practices. Uh, Connie is a media artist working at the intersection of performance, video and sound in the context of urban architecture and the city. Since 2017, she has curated the participatory event series RAD Performance, or RAD Performance. She has been organizing night rides and art rides in various countries since 2014, which took place as part of City of Noise with Viennese record labels. Since the numerous projects have been realized in the context of sound art, the city and communism with bicycles in public spaces. Since the start of the pandemic in 2020, she has been working on a new music format for Vienna, which has been developed as an innovative possibility for concerts in public space. Connie Tang studied digital art with Ruth Schnell, Virgil Wildrich, and Peter Weibel at the University of Applied Arts Vienna, as well as gender studies at the University of Vienna and experimental uh, and electroacoustic music at the University of Music and Performing Arts Vienna. So welcome Connie uh, and welcome Robin. We are going to visit Robin's space after Connie's uh, bike ride uh, performance. And what you would need to know about Robin uh, is that they are uh, a sound and media artist with an emphasis on feminist world building through storytelling and performance experimental sound, experimental, experimental composition, digital arts, and poetry. Robin work across mediums from interactive game art to film to sound installation. By pairing visually striking virtual spaces with experimental spatial audio, they create emotionally rich and stimulating words. Their practice is steeped in ruminations, uh, ruminations on gender, family and kinship, and asks how miscommunication and misunderstanding within the, and between bodies, objects, and environment inform these relations. They are deeply interested in the effective power of using one's voice, speaking with the body, and being witnessed as generative acts of healing and connection. Robin holds an MA in Sound Studies and Sonic Arts from the University of Arts Berlin. And uh, so uh, I just received an email from Polly Corbel and they don't see anything and they can't join the space, but I would like to introduce uh, Polly's practices as well. And let's see if uh, how we are going to do this at the end of the event. So, trained as a political theorist, a visual artist and theology, a theologian, Polly Corbel's work plays with relationships and community building as an art form. One of their primary questions as a political theorist is, how are we going to live together? Space presents us with the other and allow us to experiment with different ways of relating and co-creating our reality. As space is increasingly restricted to underserved populations, VR might be an opportunity to experiment with relationships, 
and ways of being as we co-create reality. Might we imagine other possible worlds, dream them up together, which is exactly my uh, aim with uh, co-creating these spaces. So please also remember that you are all part of this. We are all doing this together and uh, I appreciate all your contributions, whatever form that may take. Uh, so just for the sake of time, I would love to uh, load in Connie's space soon, but uh, let's see if everyone who wanted to choose an avatar were able to do that. So I placed these little avatars uh, it's it's getting a bit messy in here, I know, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, if you have your cursor above uh, a person with wheels and click use avatar, then you are becoming that uh, person. And Connie can tell us, like there is, uh, yeah, Connie can tell us what the name, or Connie already told us, I'm sorry, who they are. And so if everyone is comfortable let's see uh do we need any more time or everyone is all good i uh i will uh, take out the avatars of the space so that they don't uh, or maybe i i leave the avatars into space for uh connie's uh, uh for connie's uh, presentation and performance and then after uh, we can load their space and I will take it out before we, we go over to uh, Robin's space. So uh, Connie, would you like to say anything before we enter your space? Please remember to turn back your media volume to 100 in the three dots, more menu, preferences, media volume, um, as Connie will have sound in there. <clears throat> um, yes, there will be sound uh, embedded in the in the place, and uh, we will also play sounds for you. So the idea of uh, the sound rides is that actually uh, performers are riding uh, different sound uh, bikes or realities uh, with loudspeakers, and um, the audience is surrounded by an orchestra of mobile speakers, and. Um, uh, for the first time, we are now trying this, as mentioned, in the virtual space and uh, with a choreography based on a bicycle dance, uh, popular around the turn of the last century, named Cycle Circle Dance. And the concerts will start at the very center of the space, at the green shoes. And um, it's a beautiful center, um, a very um, easy to find. Um, and yeah, please choose your bike and join our run. I have a question, Connie, before we go in. Do we explore yes. the space a bit before the performance starts? Or when we enter, we should just all stay in the same spot and you are going to move and we are just uh, hanging by the shoes? Exactly, exactly. It's, it's, um, we uh, explore the space um, spatially and uh, with a sound. So I would uh, like to do a brief sound check if you can hear our sounds because we have um, both uh, connected um, this, the microphone and our, our um, additional uh, compositions and soundtracks. So we will do a brief uh, sound check, and then uh, Matt and me we will uh, um, dance, so to say, some scores for you with the sound. And um, in this case, it's it's more about the performance and about the sound work as about the the visual. Um, perception of the space. But of course, I want to tell a lot about the space as well. And um, yeah, the space is quite small still, but um, it, it has a lot uh, of story, of course, because it's uh, based um, on, on the public side in Vienna. Uh, we are entering a spiral, a bike spiral, and these spirals, uh, well, I can tell that in the space because it's, it's quite, um, yeah, you'll see. <laughs> it's a bit uh, turning. <laughs> as we will turn around you with our sounds. Awesome. So I will load the space now. Do you want to do the, the check quickly, the sound check? Yes, we can do that here as well. Mm -hmm. Matt, are you ready? Yep. Great. Um, can I ask you to play the first sound for us? 
maybe the um I don't know. Good. Thank you. And I will also play the sound. Okay. Awesome. That works too. All right. Okay. So, so I will load the scene and uh, uh, it might take a little bit and it might be a bit dark, but just stay with us and see you there. Also got in. Oh, great. That's good. Awesome. Oh. I think I have... Sorry, I'm reverberating into the void here. One second. It's all good. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Yay. Hey, guys. So sorry. Don't be. It's all good. And I think we are probably all ready for uh, experiencing your dance, Connie. Okay. So um, Matt and me will now start to do some um, scores, uh, different scores based on the site of Circle Dance. And uh, this was a popular uh, concert, uh, not a concert, but a dance, a bicycle dance format around 1901 in Vienna, in other cities. Uh, in Europe, and um, um, we also started to combine that with uh, specific sounds and movements. So we would like to now present you some different scores we created. And uh, just to tell you, we will, uh, Matt and me will always uh, meet in the center with you uh, at the shoes, but um, with uh, different soundtracks and sounds, we will uh, uh, move around you and um, we will play some sounds for you. So um, what I can see now that uh, usually there should be actually a, a sound a sound uh, track also in the room embedded. So this is now uh, silent. I think it's silent. Oh, Matt, can you hear the, the embedded sound? The... I can't hear no. the embedded sound. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. That's what I was asking you in the morning, but um, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, there is... Yeah, how should we do? It should be maybe we do it without the sound in yes. the background. I mean, it's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it will be a bit more raw because it was uh, meant to be layered um, with, uh, as you know, you have to imagine the, the field recording or the sound uh, scape of um, this specific bridge uh, you're uh, surrounded with. So um, the uh, bridge, the, uh, <laughs> it's called... Uh, after it's called Brigitte Nauer Brücke. It's a, it's a German um, name, uh, Brigitte Nauer, and uh, it's, a, it's a specific bridge in Vienna. And uh, this bridge uh, was. Um, oh, was it? Matt, was it you? Uh, no, no, no. It's maybe okay. somebody's echo. But I'm ah, yeah. gonna be like mindful of time that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think uh, we start the, the, the compositions on this call. Matt, are you ready? Yes. So uh, you're counting the sound. I'm counting the movement. So um, I'm I'm ready for the sounds. Um, Three, two, and go. Okay, drei, zwei, eins, go.
Okay, I'm ready. There is some feedback, though. <laughs> yeah, please. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Go. Drei, zwei, eins, go. Drei, zwei, eins, go. Thank you. 
Thank you. I'm feeling a little <laughs> yes, I hope you enjoyed the um, our writing sounds for you. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. This was amazing. Uh, it was also just very disorienting that we have all the same authors. There are some who are like actually part of the space and to know where the sound comes from and who is who and where are you and are you actually changing your avatars meanwhile as well or it was a uh, hard to hard to follow um <laughs> the uh, other uh, guest would you like to uh, comment on or ask question to and also thank you so much for for uh, matthias to uh join us and to, to uh, spoil us with such a performance. I thank you. <laughs> uh, for, for me, it was very interesting how the sounds transformed into very organic uh, sounds and somehow yeah. like something that would, like my brain would register at the beginning as an industrial, like a train track or banging on the garbage. Um, been or whatever city noises these may be turned into very organic like underwater whales singing or bees or somehow it, uh, it uh, created this like nature kind of feeling to me I'm not sure how the others felt I felt very similarly, Judith. It was like um, I wrote snarling vehicles, blurred line between machine slash life, insect or machine. I'm in a field of uh, machine insects. It was it was amazing. Thank you so much, Connie and friend. Thank you for this feedback. Wow, I want to have those uh, writings you did. <laughs> sounds like an, uh, an amazing score for the <laughs> for our movement. <laughs> I also, um, so this is kind of a, a project that is partially connected to a collaboration we started with Connie and we had uh, a previous uh, ex experiment with this when there were more uh, avatars carrying sound, like everyone was carrying sound and everyone was moving around along the, the path. And that was very disorienting for me. And uh, I have a lot of practices when I try to get dizzy. However, uh, it, like my uh, boundaries are very wide and I usually don't get dizzy, but in that experience, I got uh, dizzy. And I was really interested, how is it going to be to just be still and uh, surrounded and immersed in the sound? It was not uh, like, uh, it didn't have that physical effect of dizziness on me. How was it for, for uh, Matthias and, and Connie? How was it for you? Well, for me personally, the, the sound is very loud, so I don't hear the special, uh, the speciality or the spatial environment so much. So, I would be interested to to, to be on the other side, let's say, <laughs> to stand around, because yeah, I just feel like moving through the space, but not. I don't hear the details. I also don't yes. hear Connie so much because my sound is overtaking. Um, through because of the routing of the sound so that it goes into the browser my sound is taking over so that's mm -hmm. what I hear. <laughs> but I guess yes exactly sorry go ahead Connie. Uh, that's that's what we have, have been uh, that's how we have been rehearsing as well so we had to uh, switch off our uh, the other so our sound and experience the other's movement and the other's um, movement through the space and uh, but when we're both are uh, playing, uh, then we, we actually can't hear the spatial setting. This is uh, this is also very similar to the performance in public space, because it's it's not like a sound walk where you are um, in public space with uh, closed uh, headphones, but it's um, 
we, we're carrying the sound on our, on our bikes and uh, the participants are always surrounded by the sounds. And if you're just next to a sound bike, then the sound bike is very loud and you might not hear the other one. But if you're in between two, then you, of course, would um, very um, yeah, spatially hear the movement of the sound sources. And um, yeah, so this overlaying of sounds, this is, this is quite interesting for us. But in this uh, case, uh, it's it, similar as in the public space. If you ride a sound bike, you can't experience this spatial, uh, exp um, spatial setting. But if you're a participant, then you can move between those uh, sound sources. So this was, would be... Um, this was the thing uh, you did mentioned, uh, the, the performance you did mentioned before, that we had uh, a performance, um, uh, we, we had a project uh, together um, where we, uh, we've been cycling through one of Judith's spaces. Uh, she, uh, Judith created amazing, uh, huge uh, sound soundtracks, tracks, <laughs> and tracks of eight, uh, where, the, where we cycled with a group of people um, along this, uh, this route. And, uh, I would say I, I got today, I got very dizzy as well, um, because uh, cycling along the sphere for a certain amount of time, it's, it's really, it gets you in a, in a meditative uh, state in a way. And um, yeah, yeah, so it's, um, it's a rather spatial sound experience, but <laughs> a physical experience for me, at least. I, th I think this is actually a very important question to uh, how you, give care and receive care right? and what it means to be on this side or that side and and how do we create these um, experiences for each other and i really appreciate you to treating us with this um, special day today so thank you so much uh, i i think we are at the time to to explore robin's space and I um, deleted these avatars from the space so that hopefully they don't show up in the next room. Uh, and I want to check if, uh, Robin, would you like to say a few words before we enter your space? Hi. Um, thank you, Connie, for sharing that really fun and bizarre digital performance. <laughs> I haven't experienced anything like that before. <laughs> so it was really interesting. Oh, really wow, cool. thank you. Um, yeah, it was just really fun and different. Um, and yes, uh, there are instructions. And when we enter my room, um, you can just read the instructions and follow them. And basically, we will arrive in a small field of flowers that were uh, taken from Berlin city sidewalks. And these were very um, uh, resilient flowers that came up in early spring while it was still cold. And I captured them in 3D. And at each bulb, flower bulb, there is an electromagnetic sound that was also captured near that space. Um, where the flower was located. It's not from the flower, but it's from around the flower. So I'm really kind of considering our attunement to our own environment and what we're aware of and what we're not aware of in public spaces. And yeah, I just want to encourage listening and listening to each other and also playfulness and having fun. So, Thank you so we can talk a little bit more about it, but I think I think we just go in and read and then, right. and if you have questions or you have trouble, then just let me know. Yeah. Sure. And then we can explore, uh, everyone can explore on their own for a few minutes and then we can maybe gather for some conversation after about five or 10 minutes or something, right? So I'm loading. Great. Uh, yeah. Robin Lutenberg's beautiful electric fields. You might need to move away from the pack to be able to read the <laughs> um, text. Not to be fun. <laughs> one collective body.
Does anyone have any questions about the instructions? Yeah.
That's super cool as well. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Thanks everyone for playing <laughs> with me. Thank you. That was fun. And so, yeah, sorry if you got stuck in a flower. <laughs> no, th I think that's super funny actually. I just I didn't uh, say this at the beginning because I um, I wasn't uh, sure if we're gonna have DB objects that do that, <laughs> and I think it was a very, uh, very yeah nice addition to I. Also, really appreciate your your brilliant, simple design to make this uh, environment uh, becoming like an amazing uh, sound piece activated by the avatars, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, I wanted something participatory. Yeah. And Hubs is. Um, yeah, if you turn down your media volume, it'll help a lot so you won't be distracted by the electromagnetic sounds. Um, and so we are yeah. gathering in the Hubs center. Is a, is a bit limited. Yeah. Sorry? Hey. Yeah, in the center. Hello. Hello. I think that uh, everyone arrived. Uh, do you need, does anyone need help? Uh, drop it in the chat, please. And if we are all together back in the center and in in silent as Bob, um, I would love to ask you about actually gaming, Robin, a bit. That um, I uh, I know that you have been interested in uh, experimental gaming in your works, and if you wanna continue mm -hmm. your thought about uh, creating this environment for us, I I would. I love that, and also encourage everyone to remember that you are the part of this. So, feel free to add your beautiful thoughts and questions. And this is a great uh, time to ask the the Robin, the Robin. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I've been really interested in experimental gaming, and also thinking about gaming as something that doesn't necessarily need to be goal oriented, but something that we can do for pleasure and fun with a group and not in a way that we are looking to acquire things or looking to reach a next level or doing something like that. But this thing where it's just really about going around and exploring or with this work in particular, really focusing on listening um, and listening to the environment, but also listening to what others are doing or trying to really hone in on what your flower is saying. And, you know, um, so just trying to think about games in ways that aren't typically marketed to us, <laughs> hmm. um, I guess, you know. This is always a, a big question for me, how, and I, I guess for all the artists who are creating these amazing spaces, what, what are the differences and where are the boundaries of an art piece, social practice, uh, conversation, care for each other, but also uh, making games and uh, uh, like being in the video game, uh, like, or of course that question comes up in, in uh, many layers of reality, right? And it's becoming, a, for me at least, more and more like a expensive. And uh, I, I love to move towards uh, this, uh, not, not product oriented, but uh, paying attention, slowing down, watching the very subtle electric uh, fields. Uh, 
silent, Bobby silently asking how can we exist together in a state of collaborative play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that this is kind of engaging in that question a little bit and thinking about what this kind of community practice that VR Art Camp um, is promoting and reflecting on and also thinking about the accessibility of Mozilla Hubs, um, not only for the players, but also the creators and what's possible with that accessibility. Because with other types of digital gaming, there's all these, a lot more maybe um, barriers to entry with, mm. you know, different kinds of consoles and yeah. I also love the like I just can't like when when you said how I uh, VR art camp also uh, promote not to create products, but I and and as I always suggest artists that that these spaces are not I'm not so interested in you creating a fabulous space, but more so thinking about this deep care that goes into the space that that we just experienced in, uh, in your studios. But I also would like to put all the amazing uh, design that and shapes that you uh, evoke, right? These, the flowers that can be um, just like water splashes or clouds or explosions. And they might be super microscopic, tiny, but they might be huge and enormous and just like different galaxies of some sort. Um, yeah, it's really fun to take these things that we step over in the city and then to magnify them. <laughs> uh, can you share a bit about the They're so big. The um, for the visuals? Uh, actually, for the, the also the magnetic, the electromagnetic sounds, and then like how you, uh, like what, how do you choose and magnify the the details? Like, do you wait for the invitation from those resilient tiny bead, or how do you approach these critters in your work? With the with taking the three D models. Um, I tried a lot of different flowers and groupings of flowers, and I particularly liked these, which were on a windy day. And I think it's because they were so um, resistant to being captured. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was really beautiful. And their resistance shows in, in the way that there are all of these nooks and um, jumps between the stems and the bulbs and you know there's only so much that can happen when uh, when there's wind in a 3d image <laughs> and then it does it doesn't come out quite right you know and so um, I really like that that they couldn't really be reduced to binary codes um, because nature is so resistant to these kinds of things and um, so I chose the ones that that had these kind of nice images to them. And then I just kind of played around. I'm not necessarily, I'm not trained at all in visual stuff. So I, I just fool around <laughs> until something looks okay. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm like, I'm really trained in, in audio, you know? And so um, with the audio, I went around uh, near each flower and just kind of hunted for electromagnetic waves, which are, um, radio signals pretty much that we cannot hear because they're not transmitted through air through air molecules. So there are these special microphones that can pick them up. And uh, what it what they really mean is that there's a lot of radioactivity happens, which which means that there's probably a lot of human activity happening in terms of electricity and um, impulse electrical impulses and things like that. So. It's just, I think the, you know, um, contradiction between the flowers and these like electromagnetic waves were interesting. And so I found them uh, and then, yeah, put them on loops and Whoa. assign them to their flowers. 
this is so interesting and i was also very interested how uh, it aligns with this like that electromagnetic waves are not like sound waves because they don't need molecules to travel and this for me feels also so important in these spaces right like what are the circumstances and what are these molecules that we create in these spaces and how do we transmit or energies or thoughts or love or concepts but not right and uh, i really appreciate yeah. how you magnify this this really beautiful care that you are bringing here so thank you so much thank you yeah it was a really it was a fun practice <laughs> it was super fun to it, was, it was all an experiment i didn't <laughs> i didn't know if it would work until you know i tried it so I'm glad What's I did. What's your favorite flower? My favorite flower? Um, that's really difficult. I really like the cluster of flowers mm -hmm. over yeah, the big cluster of, of dandelions or no, they're um, they're not dandelions. They're, they can't remember. Um, but I also like these blue bonnets. <laughs> Which one is blue bonnet over there? It's from the home. Yeah, there's a trio of bonnets, and I just think they're really nice. I, I like how their heads are detached. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear guests, uh, do you have any questions to Robin? Blue bonnets, please. So uh, just for the sake of time, I uh, I thank you so much for, for this amazing uh, environment and treating us. I'd like to, uh, after I finish the sentence, I'd like to ask you to turn back your media volume. And then we are going to uh, visit Polly's space. And so Polly, uh, you couldn't uh, uh, log in to the part where I introduced your practices a little bit. But uh, would you like to share a little bit? Thank you so much, Robin. This, this was amazing. And so in, in Polly space, we still have uh, more time to, to also weave together these conversations because that's the most interesting part. So would you like to say a few words before we enter your space, Polly? Um, well, change. thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, wow, 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 Connie and Ravi, this has been such an honor to be in this cohort with y'all. And um, you did just, Thank you for creating spaces for us. The resonances between the work that I've seen today and the kind of blurry, amorphous blending of machine and organic, or what we consider to be organic, um, has just been overwhelming. So the space you're about to go into is the concrete from which these flowers might you know, resist and push through. So um, I don't know if we want to enter that world. Um, we have, I don't know how we to have do that. To. <laughs> and uh, would you like to guide us when we enter the space? Uh, is there something specific that we should do, or everyone is? Um, yeah, it's got basically nothing for you to do. Um, so just do whatever you want and. Um, yeah, I we we can talk while we're in. I mean, you'll see. It's it's basically nothing. So all right. So yeah. here text or convenience <laughs> by Polly Corbett. And as Polly said, uh, feel free to talk and uh, explore at your convenience. <laughs> Wait, you did. I have a black screen. Is that? It's it's okay. If you have a black screen, it just takes some time to to load. Um, so uh, I think uh, you just have to be a yeah. bit patient. How is Silent Bob doing? Do you, do you awesome. Do you Thank you so much. Uh -huh, sure.
<laughs> Paula, did, did the face load for you? Can you move around and see us now? I'm going in the hot tub if anyone would like to uh, come with me. Oh, you are already in the hot tub. May I join? <laughs> So, uh, Polly, can you hear us? If uh, uh, if uh, uh, Polly had some problems to maybe the the space didn't load for them perfectly. Uh huh. Hot up party here, hey, friends. I also appreciate if you just unmute yourself, and I think this is the space to, to, to digest what we went through. Awesome, and uh, I also uh, would like to highlight a bit of how the the three artist spaces are just all connected by space and collective bodies and like. Polly's ideas of radio no nowhere um, and uh, the spaces of the city, the tiny uh, details that are very boring and don't necessarily carry a lot of significance unless you find your body in the hot tub. Can, uh, so Silent Bob can't talk because they are silent or uh -huh. <laughs> Okay. Um Yes, I can. I'm here for you. Can you see me? And can can you speak, or you just don't want to? You can see me, and then follow me. And I can take you down to the store. Okay, how about if, uh, but you can hear me, right? Okay, perfect. So how about uh, we can also gather around our Bio particle field work, that's great. And I love that you can communicate uh, with the chat. I would love to uh, also just uh, on a, uh, read how Polly writes about themselves. I am Polly, I am many antidisciplinary artist, political theorist, theologian, alchemist, curious, soft, sometimes prickly. My work is a mirror to see more clearly the patterns of my being. My work is a spiritual practice hammering out ways of being, meeting the self in the material, meeting the material in the self. My work is a gleeful engagement with material and immaterial worlds. Every work, every space, a social sculpture, a dance with time and gravity and all forms of energy, including you and me. Uh, 
and with this i would be happy to uh -huh, sure um uh, i also uh read a bit about how um holly talks about my work is a radio novel scene reaching out with unanswered questions stumbling along feeling my way through the bubbling wonder that it is to even exist and to exist here now with you as a death to the accompanying being from life into void, infinite, non-being, I am dislodged, feet firmly planted at once in several dimensions, infinite, existing in blurred liminality, softly whispering ways of being beyond hegemonic linear time, beyond borders. And this radio novel and these ideas uh, felt so resonant to me. So let's see, everyone, um, uh, should we go back in the hot tub? Where is, I, I kind of lost track of where is everyone, but let's go to the roof. And uh, I would love to open up the platform for all, all guests and visitors to, to just unmute yourselves and start talking at the same time. I would be happy to, if, if you all um, feel like and would like to uh, uh, have a little experiment or a last experiment with me, uh, could we do this uh, cacophony experiment that another a former VR art camp artist any Albagli invited us in uh, in their space uh, a few years ago, and this would be to just share for a minute how we all are at the same time. And with this, I guess what uh, Matt was describing too that you can probably only hear what you are talking about, and uh, may don't hear what the other person says. So might be a good practice for just uh, start the conversation and my question would be um, that uh, the same question what Polly is asking uh, how are we going to live together and uh, so space is the dimension that presents us with the existence of the other whether that be with other persons countries environments animals plants elements or objects it is the dimension we can play with in a tangible sense, where we can shift structures and address fundamental political questions like, how are we going to live together? And so with this, I, uh, I would like to invite you to just start talking at the same time for a minute, sharing your, uh, your experience, how you feel at the moment, how were these three different studio spaces, how is the void? And if you feel like staying silent because this is Silent Bob's uh, convenience store, um, you are welcome to do that. You are welcome to use different languages on, or non-languages or any kind of sound that you would like to make. So if everyone is ready, let's, uh, let's start do this please now. So si Silent Bob is saying that we are going to live together. Uh, how can we live this break through the concrete? And I'm thinking about the concrete and the malleability of materials and the different layers of realities. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about reason bodies. I'm thinking about what is included in this field. Uh, and and the the and the and the and and the and the and the 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 the zu entwickeln, von unzähligen performativen Interventionen hingehen zu einem Raum, wo einem digitalen Raum Dinge 
gleichzeitig auch besiegen können. Im Sinne von äh, Bewegung, aber auch im Sinne von Bewegung als Kollektiv. Wie kann ähm, ein, ein Wort äh, von, äh, zum Beispiel unsere Warnungen, how, how to change our description about the body, about the body of the space, unsere Warnungen mit unserem eigenen Körper, über bestimmte Räume und Sichtbarkeiten in öffentlichen Räumen, in Clubräumen oder auch im öffentlichen Leben. Thank you, Connie, for joining me. <laughs> <laughs> And Robin for singing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I can't hear Robin. Um, oh. Am I just uh, missing all the sounds? Like, I can only hear... Robin, can you say something, please? Can you sing again? <laughs> I, I couldn't hear that. Oh, my dear. Okay, I'm gonna, like, reload this page and we'll be back in one second. <laughs> Sitting on the dock of the bay. Oh, <laughs> something Polly said. Polly said something about wasting time, and that made me think of this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so I, okay, this is actually a funny coincidence that I haven't heard anyone except for Connie, <laughs> and so oh. <laughs> which is also. Uh, you were too resistant to record, right? Like it was uh, your song will stay in the resistance <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it will only exist in the memories of those who could hear you. Um, and also, uh, this is how we had to do a, a conversation talk with Connie that I couldn't hear anyone. And it was supposed to be a conversation between the two of us, but I couldn't hear what she was saying. So I guess now it was like trying to have a conversation when I don't hear anyone else. And also I see that Polly is having a hard time to actually joining us. Um, yes, Jay's in the lobby spectating. Let's see if I attend on spectator mode. And so, um, let's see. Okay, Black and Jay is on loading screen. Okay, cool. But uh, we appreciate that you are dropping your thoughts in the chat. So anyone um, would like to, to uh, fill the void or share how this kind of boredom, concrete boredom can be used as resilience in their daily life or my be a takeaway or never take anything away <laughs> kind of thing. Matt is going back in the hot tub. Um, I like it. Well, I was thinking when um when you're not given a directive how there's just no stress to do something. And it was really nice to do things in my own time and to think about time maybe differently. And also to look deeper at objects. And uh, yeah, just to take more more time because I, I wasn't being directed to elsewhere, you know? Yeah, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> and then maybe I have No to... clock sold here. And I, I also have to apologize then because maybe then I just interrupted this very exact thing that Polly was aiming to uh, give us, right? To, to be undirected and I'm just can't stop talking and <laughs> give, give voice to silent Bob who did never ask for. <laughs> But maybe that's what you do in silence. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so actually, I was interested in, in Robin. Um, when we had this like cacophony uh, sharing, I just remembered, first of all, like being really stands out for me in all your uh, spaces, how in Connie's space I could uh, hear the, the sound of the wind in, in a very otherworldly recording. And I love that you even 
included the VINs in uh, in the uh, visual recordings of the flowers and how the motion of wind becomes something. And I uh, I started to work with the wind a lot with this uh, big blob tent that I'm flying in the wind, but also I can make a, a void of, like it's not concrete, so it's way more uh, organic than than the the video uh, store but it is empty and it becomes whatever we fill it with and this uh, week I had this experience that the wind was banging on the back of my head and maybe because of my um, windbreaker jacket hood that made the sound or maybe I kind of uh, imagine the sound of the wind just like had this very strong hum that was inviting me and the end of like the 10 sentences I started and to end with the question I'd like to ask you Robin is how do you hear these sounds and how do you uh, feel invited or drawn to some tiny detail that you choose to bring or that you chose to bring into your practice. How does how does this process work for you? Does it make sense this question? Um, me, mm, yeah, specifically wind or. So for, for me, like before I climb the tree, I kind of have to wait for it to like invite me. And I was curious, how do you yeah. work, work with the details? Like how are these details that you collected for us and that you magnified for us and recorded and, and brought? Yeah. Like how are they significant to you or how are they inviting you or how is this process for you? Mm. I, think I, I think I work a lot through pleasure and I have a hard time with things that don't that don't bring me pleasure, which includes how I hear them or how they make me feel when I listen to them. And I, yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of people are very good with uncomfortable or discomforting sounds. Um, and I like things that yeah, I don't know, that are more harmonic or something. So I even, I was very nervous about this electromagnetic piece because it's maybe one of the quote unquote uglier in terms of sounds, you know, it's not super pleasurable, but yeah, I mean, because they're gritty and, and, um, and they can be harsh, but I actually kind of tuned them a little bit <laughs> to my taste so that they wouldn't have certain frequencies um, that i find pain painful I guess but I, I I pretty much I work from a, a position of pleasure and I like things that are you know inviting and beautiful and soft and um, make me feel like I'm in an ethereal space or yeah something like this that's very inspiring and also so powerful to like be like yes this is how um, that that can actually like what care can be or look like, right? That like, yes, I, I would like to bring pleasure uh, into existence. Thank you for sharing that, Robin. Um, yeah. Do, I think that it's only like Matthew, Connie, Silent Bob, you and me, and we are at the time of the end of this uh, show and tell. And um, was wondering if anyone has any other questions. I just want to thank you, Judith, for um, <laughs> for hosting this uh, beautiful event and uh, also for helping a lot with the space. Because uh, I think for me it was also not so easy to, to get into hubs. And um, in the end, uh, also rehearsing with Matt was, um, was quite a pleasure, adding to Robin's pleasure. <laughs> because uh, we, we quite uh, had, to, had to try out different uh, movements and so on. And, and this was... Uh, this was quite fun. I mean, lots of bugs happened as well because I always had the bug that I can't stop circling, and then uh, we circle around and um, and trying different things, and suddenly everything is stuck, uh, stuck, and, and yeah, um, or it's not uh, stopping turning anymore.
before, and uh, it was it felt really playful. The whole uh, the whole um, how to say preparation, the whole rehearsal time for this event tonight, and um, yeah, I, I want to say thank you for this uh, experience of being part uh, at the VR art camp because yeah, I think I learned a lot um, how to how to enter such a such a space. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I super appreciate all your work and also Matthew to, uh, or Matt to, uh, to have Connie and to provide us this amazing experience. And I, I'm also very curious, I, I love to see how you all are thinking about care and how to bring these. Uh, and that's what I'm kind of struggling with in, in VR art camp and would like to ask your your continuous help or like whatever capacity you may have to 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 bring this forward and I, and for me what you created today is exactly what i'm having in my mind or what i uh, dream of and yeah what are your dreams for the art camp network but that's i'm not i i would like to dream together right and that's but I'm a bit struggling with that, that um, what is the boundary? Yeah, so that's, <laughs> I would love to, to see all dream and not my dream and, and to have all these things connected and co-created and, and that is not a, a burden that an artist have to struggle with hubs and spend all this time creating something that will be used for 20 minutes, but continue to use these spaces and maybe bring specific conversations or, um, you know, show your other practices or uh, play with other experiments. So if, um, if you want to continue to hang in the, in the convenience store, I, I'm very happy to do that. If uh, we could revisit the electromagnetic fields or explore more of the bike performances, I would love uh, if we um, if we would continue and if if you have any suggestions and ideas how to reach the other artists and how to to bring these thoughts and conversations connect in, into connection and to cross pollinate each other's spaces with those bikes and pollens and electromagnetic sounds and the lack of everything and boredom and whatnot, right? So thank you so much for all your work and uh, please let me know if you would like to uh, continue hosting events or if you have any other ideas that uh, you may have and uh, would like to uh, change in the, in the VR art camp. Thank you, Polly. Thank you, Matt. Th thank you, Robin. And thank you, Connie. This was yeah, really amazing. You are. <laughs> thank you thank yeah. you i will load back the art camp comments it is an honor to work with you all too and i appreciate polly your patience with partially participating and i'm sorry for the inconvenience uh, that it hasn't loaded perfectly